Hello, it is I, Greg Bosson. How are you? From the land of QuickBooks Made Easy, I come to you, bringing you all things QuickBooks. So we have a quick tip email newsletter. If you don't know about it, you can sign up for it at QuickBooksMadeEasy.com. And this month's tip, uh, July 2013, is on voiding versus deleting checks. So we all have checks that, for whatever reason, don't clear. Oh, and by the way, uh, I'm going to teach using version 2013, but it doesn't matter what version you have. You can even have QuickBooks Pro of three years ago, and this is still going to apply to you. But anyway, so we all have transactions, checks, that for whatever reason don't clear. We know about them because we always see them every month when we go to do a bank rec. Uh, the system here, uh, uh, my computer thinks it's 2017 and these are all transactions in 2017 but look at this one from 2012 that hasn't cleared in five years so what do we typically do when we see those all trans transactions and you have them we all have them you just basically what we blow it off right and just click the other ones and go I wonder why that doesn't clear oh well well this is what I want to talk about we got to get rid of these transactions that are old that are never claimed because they're they're making your books wrong. This is subtracting $3,000 out of the bank account that's never going to actually be subtracted in real life. So we want to get rid of them. So how do we get rid of these things? Well, there's a couple of uh, possibilities. You can either delete the check or you can void the check. Uh, I'm going to pull up another check here. All right. So here's a check to Christina Falco for $150. And first of all, where do you go to delete or void? Well, what you do is, if you have version 2012 or older, you won't have a delete button here. You'll have to go over here to edit. And in 2012 or older, this is where you go to delete the check, and this is where you go to void the check. And by the way, that's true for all kinds of transaction windows in QuickBooks. If I go to a little sales receipt form here, if you have the nonprofit edition, it might be called a donation receipt, but it's the same thing. Pull it up on the screen. Edit, here's where you can delete, and here's where you can void. So it's like that. It's like that on invoices, too. But anyway, that's just a little, I like to go on tangents. But anyway, that's so now you know how to delete or void anything. In 2013, uh, you don't have to do it over there. You can do it over here. Uh, here's a little X, and it, the default position is that it'll delete it, but actually I'm going to tell you that nine times out of ten, you're going to want to void something, not delete it. See this little arrow right here? If I click the arrow, you'll see delete, void. Okay? So when do you want to delete and when do you want to void? Well, for one thing, we do want to get the transaction out of here because it's, right now it's reducing our bank account by $150 when it shouldn't because the check's never going to clear. Regardless of whether you delete or void, that is going to happen. The difference is if you void, let me show you what happens if I void. Take a look at this check before I void it. It has all the information about the check. Everything's there. When I go to void it, everything is still there. Check 1964 is still there. It still says who it's to, the date. It even has the expense account it's supposed to go to. Okay? The only, and the memo. The only thing it doesn't have is a dollar amount. It's changed to zero. So what happens when you void a check, guys, is it basically just edits the check, and it basically changes the dollar amount. Oh, and it adds the word void here in a memo. They're hoping that you put why it is that you voided the check. And there's tons of reasons why you want to get rid of checks. Maybe they were lost. Maybe they got stuck in the printer or something like that. So they put this little void here and they want you to put something in the memo. You don't have to, but I think it's probably a good idea too. So all it's doing is editing the check. Not a big deal here. okay? And that's good because... I want to keep a record of check 1964. I want to remember what happened to that check. So here's the thing. If you delete a check instead of voiding it, it's going to remove the check altogether. There will be no record of it. So that's why I'm telling you nine times out of ten, if you want to make a check go away because for whatever reason it's not going to clear, you want to void it. You don't want to delete it. Because if you delete it, there will be no record of it. As a matter of fact, QuickBooks is so freaked out about it, it gives you a warning. Are you sure you want to do that? So, nine times out of ten, you want to void. If the check ever existed, you want a record of it, you want to void it. The only time you want to delete it is if maybe the check was entered twice. Then there really isn't two checks in real life, there's only one. Okay? So, uh, rare that you'd want to delete. Usually you want to void. Okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and void this. 
well, I already did. Actually, I haven't. I voided it so that it changed the dollar amount to zero, but the void doesn't actually go, it doesn't actually get recorded in QuickBooks until you click this save and close. Now, I will tell you one thing before I click void. Since I'm about to click save and close, and all I've done is edited the check, I could have done it manually by just changing the dollar amount to zero and typing void. It didn't change the date, which means it's basically going to change the check to zero as of the original date of the check. So basically what it does is it voids it in the system as of the original date the check was written. Okay? Now, that's why this window pops up that you may see. And basically what it's warning you is, it's, it's got this real weird wording. To maintain the accuracy of the financial reports and balance the accounts affected by the check, QuickBooks can create a journal entry in the earlier period and reversing journal entry in the current period. Would you like QuickBooks to void the check and enter an appropriate journal? Okay, so basically what this is saying is, if the thing that you're voiding is in a prior year, in other words, the audit's already been done, the 990's already been done if you're a nonprofit, or the tax return's already been done if you're a for-profit, you don't want to void the check as of the original date because that's going to change the financials in the older year. So you don't want to do that. You want to void it in the current year. Well, if you click no, just void the check, it's going to void it in the current year. And you can do that if the check was just written. But if it's in a prior month, a prior year, you want to click yes. And what that's going to do is it's going to basically, it's going to void the check but then it's going to do journal entries to basically make the prior year stay the same and void it in the current year so you don't mess your books up. Once the year is closed, you've done the tax return, you don't want to change the financials in that prior year. Okay, So I'm going to click yes, and basically what it's going to do is, oh, it's asking me hmm, for a class. If you are a nonprofit, you're probably using classes. So click here, then we'll go ahead and void it. And so basically what that does is it voids the transaction by the use of journal entries. I won't go into the specifics of what it does, but it voids the transactions by using journal entries so that it voids it in the current year, not the prior year. So one last thing, I'm going to show you a report here. This is a really cool report. I want everybody who's listening to me to do this to your data file. Go to Reports, go to Banking, and go to Missing Checks. This report is kind of misnamed. It sounds like it's a list of checks that are missing, but actually it's a list of all your checks except for the ones that are missing. Because it's in check order, it's a great report to look at to see if you have any missing checks. All right? So, and let me just tell you, if I'm your if I'm doing an audit on you, uh, I want to make sure that every one of your checks is accounted for. That's why I want you to void instead of delete. That check that we voided before, um, here it is right here, check 1964. This is the check we voided. See, it's still here. It says void. Okay, So that's good. You should not have any of these missing check entries right here. You shouldn't have any of those. All right. Here's check 1903. This is a mistake. That check 1903 is a real piece of paper. Something happened to it. If I'm your auditor, I don't know what happened to it. So that's why you want to check and see if you have any missing numbers. You want to enter that check for 1903 and then void it so you have a record of it. All right? So um, the only time you would have missing numbers that maybe you wouldn't do anything about is if you have like an old check, like maybe these are old check numbers and then you replace them when you ordered new checks, you went to a new a, a later series, you went from 1,000 to 5,000 or something like that. But usually you wouldn't have that. And um, the other thing that this report does that's really cool is it shows you if there are any duplicate check numbers. So here's a duplicate one, 1914, 1914. It was entered as a bill and then paid, and then it was entered as a check. So I, this is perfect example of when you would want to delete a check. So I'm going to go over here and click Delete. Are you sure? Yes, I am, because the check was entered twice. And I am done. So be sure to look at this missing checks uh, and see if you have any missing checks. And if you do, like this 1903, go ahead and enter them and then void them. Okay. So I think that's it. Again, you can find me on QuickBooks Made Easy, and I hope you enjoyed your tip.